G'day and welcome to another gun review video. Today we're going to review another old pre-World War II 22 rifle. This is a Savage Model 5. Now before we get into this rifle, we might actually just talk about Bolt Action 22, early Bolt Action 22 rifles in general and the Savage ones in, in particular. Now before the First World War, apart from uh, the Winchester model 19, models of 900, 02 and 04, they were single shot bolt actions. Uh, I've actually got a model 04, so uh, I'll just put a link up the top where you can actually see what that looks like. That video has the three different single shot rifles, it also includes another one I'm going to mention in a minute, but anyway, if you have a look at that if you're interested. Yeah, so up until the First World War, there wasn't really any bolt action repeating 22 rifles. Now the first box magazine fed rifle was the Savage model 1903 pump action which had a box magazine. I'll show you a photo of that one. They were obviously released in 1903. It wasn't until after the First World War that the gun companies thought that they, as, as the soldiers came home and they were used to repeating bolt action rifles, they thought that there would be a market for that. Now Savage was actually first off the blocks in 1919, they actually introduced the model of 1919 bolt action target rifle, uh, box magazine fed. And um, it was a really nice target rifle. Uh, unfortunately, after a short amount of time, Winchester actually brought out their Winchester Model 52, which was a very high grade, uh, almost iconic rifle. Uh, which was thought to be better than the Model 1919. The Model 1919 was obviously often called the NRA model. They made the Model 1919 for quite a number of years. It was, it was actually still quite popular as a target rifle. Then in 1923, Savage saw, saw a, a market for a sporting type bolt action clip fed rifle. So they released their Savage Model 23A, which is a, a bolt action clip fed rifle. That was different in that um, they copied Winchester, the Winchester Model 67 and 69 had the barrel and receiver all made out of one single piece of, uh, of steel. I've got a video up of my Winchester Model 69A, so you can look at that, that'll be, uh, be linked up the top. And I've also got a Winchester Model 67. Now that was one of those three rifles in the, uh, in the previous videos, so I'll put a, put a uh, link for that. So the 23A was very popular and Savage actually also introduced the rifle in a small centerfire version of basically the same rifle. There was a 23B which was in 3220. Now I've got one of those as well so I'll put a link for that up the top. 23C was in 2520 and 23D which came a little bit later I think was in 22 Hornet. Now they were actually quite nice rifles, the Model 23s and in the mid 30s or in the early 30s Savage looked at producing a rifle, a sporting 22 magazine repeater that was a bit cheaper and would sort of appeal to the masses a bit I think. The, the dates are really, if you read different things you get different dates because Savage didn't really keep records that well but uh, it seems like about 1933 Savage released um, I think they'd already had the, the Savage Model 3 single shot, I think that actually came out maybe a bit earlier, but they released the Savage Model 4, which was a clip fed, or magazine, box magazine fed 22 repeater sporter, and they also released at the same time this one, the Model 5, which is basically the same rifle as the Model 4, but instead of having a box magazine, it's got a tube magazine but the action itself is the same. The bolt's slightly modified I think just to uh, to allow the working of the of the, uh, the repeating system uh, but other than that um, the basically shape of the stock um, base of the bolt and the, and the receiver and the barrel and the magazine are all the same. So so this is a um, walnut stocked um, 
It's got a 23 inch barrel now. A lot of things early life, is my, my Model 3 has a really long barrel, it's about 25 and a half inches I think. Uh, this barrel is a bit shorter than, than is typical at that time. The 69, 67 and 69s are all about 25 inches as well. A lot of these rifles back in the day, you could actually order, do special orders for various things, different barrel lengths, different sights, etc. Uh, so it is possible that this was actually ordered with a slightly shorter barrel uh, than, than the original. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. What we might do now is we'll, uh, we'll take it onto the table and get a closer look at the, at the rifle. Alright, so let's take a closer look at this rifle. So um, we've got a safety catch in the typical kind of position here. It's actually got a little arrow, safe is forward, fire is back. We've got a nickel plated bolt. Now this one has a, what they call a, a it's an alloy, they often in, in the forum they call it pot metal, but an alloy, a cast alloy trigger guard. These came in sometime in the kind of late 30s apparently. The early ones actually had, again if you go back to my Savage Model 3, just to press steel trigger guard, the earlier ones had that. This is after, I think it was about after about 37, they changed to this. It would have had a Savage, uh, well actually, it may not have actually had a Savage sight. At the moment, this sight here is actually a BSA sight, you can see. Um, someone's put that sight on, but uh, that's not the original sight. And I don't think this front one's the original sight either. It doesn't look like a Savage sight, but yeah, basically they had a, would have had just a normal bead sight just like the one on my savage model 3 which is probably about the same era as this rifle um, we got some cut checkering hand cut checkering on the stock the butt plate is uh, plastic black plastic i have read that maybe the very early ones of these may have had a steel a steel butt plate on them with the savage symbol but um I think it changed very quickly because all, all the ones I see, all the pictures of them I see online all have this plastic butt plate. Now these are a takedown rifle and by just about all American rifles at this time. So you've got a takedown knob there. We'll do that shortly. And we will have a look at the magazine. So um, it's just got a typical typical tube magazine. Holds uh, 14 rounds. In the advertisements in the old catalogues they always say holds 15 rounds but of course they always include one in the chamber so but yeah the magazine itself holds 14 rounds if we go to the other side now let's just have a look at the uh, I, I talked about this site having been replaced now this rifle these rifles when they were sold um, could be bought with a a optional peep site now there were ones that were called Savage Model 5S which came with a quite a fancy Lyman peep sight but there was was a more basic peep sight uh, which um, didn't have as much adjustment on it which could which came as an optional extra and this rifle obviously had that and the way you can tell that is it's got this part machined in a, a threaded hole you can see the hole in the stock where the where the sight used to sit and the other thing it's got is if you look at this cutout here, if this had been bought with a with just a normal rear sight, the receiver would have been solid up to the back. So when you bought it with the receiver sight, they actually milled this cut at the factory, and it meant that you could actually take the bolt back and then take it around around the sight, so you could remove the bolt without without uh, taking the sight off. Now the the ones with the bigger Lyman sight, they're a much bigger, chunkier sight. They actually had an even longer, even longer um, cutout there. In this photo posted by SAV22, a member on the Savage Collectors Forum, the top rifle is a Stevens Model 514 with a light, which is the same action as a Savage Model 4. It's got the Lyman 42 sight on it and it, you can see the large cutout in the receiver for that sight. The middle one is a Savage Model 4, same receiver as mine basically, and it's got the Savage 105 sight and the same cutout as mine for the sight. 
and then the bottom one is a Savage Model 5 like mine but has no peep sight and you can see there's no cutout at all the other thing to notice is the bottom one Savage Model 5 has the pressed early pressed steel trigger guard while the middle Savage Model 4 has the uh, cast alloy trigger guard the same as my Model 5 does in addition you'll see that this receiver has two uh, drilled and tapped and plug screwed holes uh, for a scope man that's for a weaver t1 and t32 i think it read a special weaver scope mount that will um, screw onto there again that wasn't on the early ones i think it, that came in somewhere in the in the late 30s now let's just see if we can focus on this and show you the markings on this Savage Arms Corporation, U Utica, New York, made in the USA, Model 5. Now, there's a few things we can do to date this rifle. Uh, the first one is the fact that it's Utica, New, I don't know if it's pronounced Utica or Utica, but um, New York, they finished in 1946 there, uh, after the Second World War, they moved. So that dates this rifle to pre-1946. Now the other thing we can look at is if, just ignore those other marks there for a minute, I'm gonna talk about those in a minute, but if you look at just underneath the rear sight, patent 2094577. So here's the actual patent drawings. Uh, you can see the full patent online. I'll put a link in the description so if you're interested in reading the patent it goes for several pages um, it's quite interesting if you're into firearms design so just click on the link down the bottom and then you can uh, follow it to that but you can see the uh, the all the patented drawings uh, for this rifle and this patent was actually awarded to hang on let me just try to find it um, to awarded to NL Brewer who was obviously worked for Savage at that time on October 5th 1937 now that patent was was uh, uh, was granted in 1937 the earlier rifles had a slightly different patent number on them because they must have made some slight improvements so that man, that dates this rifle between 1937 and 1946 in that nine year period now if we look at these other marks here let's see if i can get this to focus so it's obvious for you if you look on the receiver there for a start you've got a, a circle with a crown on it bp not english make then if we look on the barrel we've got circles with bv we've got a circle with bp and we've got a circle with np 0.22 LR, not English make. Now those are Birmingham proof marks from Birmingham in the UK. And they follow the 1925 rules of proof where foreign firearms have to have their proof for a start, all their proof marks are within a circle and it has not English make. Now early on the not English make was actually in a big square uh, and from 1925 on but then at some stage later on I'm not quite sure when they uh, they got rid of that square and they just had not English make and then that finished in not this all these this type of mark not English make finished in 55. Now I believe that it's most likely the reason that this rifle is proofed is because it was actually part of the lend lease program because because savage model fires were actually listed as being on the lend lease programs which means that they were um, given as military aid to the to the british or lent theoretically lent as british military aid to the british in about 1942 i think before the americans entered the war and of course every firearm that uh, enters the UK has to actually be proofed and I have actually found some photos on the net of, of actual rifles that actually went on the Lend Lease program and came back to the UK mainly Mossberg 42 M's I think they're called that had all these same proof marks 
And the age of the rifle, this rifle was made between 1937 and 1946. From about 42 to 46, Savage would have been busy making firearms and firearm parts for for the war effort. Uh, of course, they made uh, a lot of number four rifles for the British. So I doubt very much whether they would have been making 22 sporting rifles at this during that period. So that pretty much narrows this one down to probably between about 37 and 42, really. Uh, which sort of fits with you know the fact that the American government probably bought these rifles new and then shipped them off to the UK. Now it's subsequently turned up in Australia, I don't know how that is. Pro a lot of the lend -Lease stuff never actually went back to the US. A lot of it was just sold, you know, was sort of given back to the US, but instead of shipping it back, they just sold it off at auction or whatever in the UK. So it's likely that this went to the UK, was in the military as a training rifle, was then sold off, and someone's probably subsequently bought it and then maybe immigrated to Australia and brought it with them. Is the most likely scenario with that. All right, so let's have a bit of a closer look at um, the in innards of this rifle. So it's a takedown rifle. The slot is actually um, the perfect size for about a 10 cent piece or uh, probably a nickel, probably designed for a nickel most likely in the US. So we can just undo the takedown screw. I've already loosened it with a coin. So we'll take that out of there, put that over there. So there we go, let's have a look at this, uh, this action. So trigger is pretty simple, we've just got um, a, a pivot here, this is the sear just in here. And so pushing that just lifts the sear, that also retains the bolt, so when you want to take the bolt out, you uh, can just that and it will trying to do it one-handed and it will come out there we go um, the trigger return spring is actually in here there's a little in this there's a little plunger in there and there's a spring inside there that just pushes against the barrel so we've got our magazine tube and it's a very simple system really and our little lifter Let's just put the bolt back in again. So as you can see, as the bolts close, there's a little part on the bottom of the bolt that actually drops the lifter. And so as the cartridge is actually put in, I'll, I'll give, we'll do a demo in a minute. Um, that drops the lifter down here and that allows the next cartridge to pop in and be sitting on top of the lifter. Now, if we look in the top here, the actual magazine actually has a little slot in the top of it. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably the best way to actually do it is to actually do a demo. So we might just do that, I think. All right, so I've got a couple of dummy rounds here. So we'll just, we might just close the bolt first. And we'll put a couple of dummy rounds in here. Right, so as you can see, if you look there, it's actually quite good, it's orange. Because the bolt was closed, the lifter was down. So the first cartridge is immediately gone in and is sitting on top of the lifter. Now, if we, oh, let's see if we can do this, just holding it like that. If we open the bolt there. Okay, so there we go. So it's actually lifted the cartridge up. And now if you look in there, you can see those feed lips, it almost looks like the top of a, of a magazine fed rifle. It's almost exactly the same. So at this point, it's just like having a magazine there. And then the bolt just inserts the cartridge. And uh, I should have been showing you the lifter. So I'll reload it again and we'll show you the lifter during that period. But anyway, there's a cartridge in there. So let's have a look there. Let's have a look at the lifter. See the cartridge on the lifter? like this okay so that lifter went up cartridges on the feed lips and 
So as you can see, it's a very simple but quite an efficient system. All right, here we are out at uh, out at the farm. We're going to give this rifle a shot for the first time. And I forgot my tripod, so I've just got my, my iPhone sitting on a little thing on the back of my ute. So I'm sorry about the perspective. I mean, anyway, we'll just try some long rifles for now. Federal standard velocity long rifle I'll try. They're my standard load that I use for everything. Um, and I've got some longs, I've got some Z longs, and I've got some shorts as well. So later on we'll try all of those and uh, see how they feed. Right, it's very bright out here and I'm having trouble seeing the screen. So if I'm not quite in view properly, I apologise. Feeds perfectly. I've got it on the lower sight setting at the moment. So we might just fire one more shot. See where it's hitting. Well, I must say that's nice to see. We've got three shots. I'm shooting at 25 meters, and we've got three shots. So obviously the sights are elevation's pretty much right. I think we possibly could knock that rear sight across to the right a tiny little bit. So I might do that. I've got my little hammer and brass punch there. And then we'll fire a few more. <laughs> Feeds beautifully this rifle really smooth all right I didn't bother filming the shooting that time because it's probably getting a bit monotonous but I think we've got it pretty right now I think those three shots were one two and then I think see where there's two in this hole I think that was the that was the other one there or one of these here so yeah so that's not too bad I mean I'm not shooting on a sandbag or anything I'm just shooting sub unsupported so what we might do now is go and get another target and then I'll shoot some longs. I've got some longs, low velocity longs, and I've got some shorts. So we might shoot both of them, see how they feed, see how they shoot. So what we might try now is some 22 longs. These are called Z longs. So a long is actually, it's not a long rifle. It's a shorter cartridge. It's the same length case as a long rifle, but the same projectile as a short, a 29 grain short instead of a 40 grain in a long rifle. And these are only about 770 feet per second. They're very quiet, very low velocity, uh, designed for shooting in build up areas and stuff like that. Uh, but remember that longs were around before long rifles were ever developed. And uh, they were a black powder cartridge way back then. So that's why a lot of these old rifles are marked short, long and long rifle. Right, so these are going to shoot lower. Uh, I've actually got, I've put, I only had 15 of these in the box. And all 15, I think it might, I think it might like take about 16 of these. I'm going to put the sights up one notch. To allow for the reduced velocity. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
feeds fine. They're very quiet. that well that's interesting I was assuming because of the lower velocity of the shorts that they were going to shoot lower um, and I put the sights up one click and they actually shot higher so oh uh, it looks like I mean this one's out to the right but those two are pretty much spot on so I think I've, I think I've pretty much got my sight setting on but anyway I'll put the sights down and we'll have another go and we'll do another three longs see if we can get them in the black or at least in the target. This is a smaller target than the other one. Now that we got it on target. Oh, I didn't film those three shots because I had the camera around the wrong way. Um, but anyway, we put the sights down and actually that's not too bad because I'm not super steady shooting like this. I'm on fairly uneven ground. So and we're shooting at 25 meters. So that's only about half an inch between those two. And then that's about an inch and a half across there. So, uh, so that's fairly good. So, we might shoot the rest of those shorts, those longs off and then I'll put up another target and we'll try some shorts. I think it'll hold about 21 shorts. All right, I just fired off the rest of that uh, 15 rounds. So remember that these first three here were, were high because the sights were set up. So, um, so the rest of them are this group here. So my, these here are probably me wobbling more than anything. But I mean, as you can see, there's three three all touching each other in the black so that seems to be a reasonably accurate load in that rifle and they're very quiet you can actually hear the click of the firing pin they're so quiet so they're really good for sort of you want to shoot in, in um, build up areas unfortunately these are made in Australia these and Winchester just in the last 12 months Winchester have stopped making rimfire ammunition in Australia and Z longs are one of the things they've been making here forever. They call them Zimmers. They used to be called Zimmers, I think. Now they, but they've been made here for decades, and that's it. Then it won't be made here anymore. I actually bought a brick of them before they, before they were um, finished. So I've still got a fair few of them, but I'll keep them for sort of special occasions like this, really. Right now, let's try some shorts. I've got a box of target shorts here. These are low velocity ones. I use two types of shorts. Shorts are getting a bit hard to get now. Uh, CCI, I think as far as I know, are the only readily available ones. And you get two types. You can either get these target shorts, which are 830 feet per second. They're a solid lead round nose, 29 grains. Uh, and then you can get high velocity shorts, they're called, I think. They're, or, or hunting shorts. They're a, a hollow point. I think they might be only be 27 grains or something. But they're up at 1100, 1100 feet per second so they're up at the same velocity as pretty much uh standard velocity 22 long rifle and in my little the main thing i shoot shorts in is my little remington model 12 it actually shoots the high velocity ones more accurately than it does these target shorts so hence i've got a whole box of these that i uh, i haven't used so i'll use them for this Yeah, I think you might fit, I think they say 21. Well, there we go. There's our four shots. This one's torn a bit. I think that's just because there was another hole but behind it. It's caused the, the paper to tear. But one, two, three, four. They're a touch high even. So uh, I definitely didn't need to put the sights up. But they're all in line and that's not a bad little group. It's about a kind of inch and a half or so group. 
so uh, they, everything in this rifle seems to shoot as good as each other so uh, anyway we might as well shoot the rest of them off all right so i've just fired another short i just thought i'd show you the feeding mechanism of this because showing a short feeding is probably a good example of seeing the advantages of this, this design so if i open the bolt there's a fired case in there there it is uh, i didn't really pull it hard enough so see that I, because i was filming i didn't really pull it enthusiastically enough but if i did there we go so you see that the little short comes up into the feed lips but it's still sitting in the feed lips and then as we push it forward it goes up behind the extractor and the little cartridge guide on the other side it's controlled feed and then it's captured and it goes into the chamber so and that's the problem with a lot of rifles won't feed shorts because when it gets to that point the short just kind of pops out because it's not supported properly uh, so here we go there's there's the difference between a short and a long rifle case so you can sort of see uh, and of course the projectile short of the long rifle as well all right there's the target now i fired 22 shorts that's not there's 22 shorts but 22 times 22 shorts in that target isn't that interesting how we've got two distinct groups i fired a full magazine at that i fired those first few and then i showed you and then i just fired the rest off continuously and we've got one group here and one group here i did notice with these shorts they varied a little bit some of them didn't seal the chamber they mustn't get enough pressure and some of them there was kind of like a little bit of a sound a tiny bit of gas came out of the chamber and others didn't and i wonder whether that's got this is really that's a really weird oops the wind's coming up now um that's a really weird phenomenon isn't it to fire i mean i was aiming at the same spot 25 meters prone and we've got two i mean both of those groups individually i'd be really happy with uh, but it looks like there's about 10 shots in each group so there you go i can't apart from that speculation i can't really specifically say what caused that anyway what we're going to do now is uh is we'll move out to 50 meters and uh I'll put a new target up I've, there's actually a big uh, old tree that was felled 100 years ago when this was a rainforest and um, i can actually use that as a rest right, here we are at 50 meters i was hoping to use this thing as a rest but it's kind of not really going to work i don't think i might have to go prone uh this whole log the termites have eaten it it's all falling to bits and i'm a little bit uh, it's a warm day today i'm a little bit wary of venomous snakes that's the sort of place that they'd like to hide under so i think i'll give that a miss that kind of doing that i thought i might be able to stand behind it and, and do it so anyway we're in the right way so we'll just have to do prone again that's a tiny little target at 50 meters it's only about inch and a half plus the outside bit now I'll just set the camera there we go I've got this sitting on the back of my truck now so we'll do a bit of a middle distance shooting target is very tiny the actual actual little spot i don't know if you'd even see that target where is it uh, <laughs> i'm having trouble seeing it through here yeah it's just it's just up here just there um see that tree it's just to the right of that tree um yeah the actual spot on the target is only about a quarter of the width at this distance of the actual front post 
Oh well, our windage is right anyway. Still right at 50 after all that mucking around at 25. So um, yeah, so we've sort of just the actual siding of the target. My kind of aging eye has been able to focus the front post and actually see that tiny little dot. That's only about probably an inch. It's probably only about an inch and a third. It's probably 30 millimeters, I'd say, something like that across there. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty small target to, to be siding at, but I mean, they're all on the sheet, so that's kind of pretty much a minute of fox at uh, 50 meters, which is pretty much in the field, I think, you know, regardless of what other people say, maybe with, with open sights anyway, is probably the limit for your accurate shooting and having enough energy to actually knock anything over. Let's fire a few more shots at 50. So I finished shooting, so any, I just thought I'd sort of point this out, any tube fed rifle, you've just got to make sure, it's, I mean it's easy with clip fed rifles, you can take the clip out or you can at least see the follow on the clip. With a tube fed rifle, in some designs it's possible for there to be a cartridge in the carrier, even when, you know, there's no cartridge showing here. But if we look down into that action, see right at the bottom, you can actually see the magazine follower. So if there was a cartridge down there, you'd be able to see the gold cartridge. If, in some cases in old rusty magazines, you could get a cartridge stuck up here, the whole thing stops, you think it's empty, you take it away and then it comes loose again and pushes the cartridge down. So with these sort of rifles, you all, if you can, you should always have a look and see if you can see the follower, which you can there. So uh, that shows that it's empty. So we can uh, we take the bolt out. That's the law here, you've got to travel, transport your rifle without the bolt in it. So anyway, let's pack up and go home. All right, so there we go. Um, so what the first five shots I fired, plus another 15, so it's 20 shots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20 out there. Had a few wobbly ones. I was having a bit of trouble towards the end. My eye was getting a bit, um, a bit strained focusing on that front sight. But, uh, but you know. You can see three quarters of them have gone into this, like this is only, that's about three inches I think, a little three inch circle, 50 metres with open sights, um, prone unsupported, so um, I'm pretty happy with that. Most of this up here was probably me rather than the rifle I think. So it says something about these old rifles, I mean this one is going on 80 years old, it's uh, most likely ran the gauntlet of the German submarines and crossed the Atlantic during World War II. It probably trained British soldiers before they went and uh, fought to liberate Europe. And somehow it's made it to Australia. Its previous owner before me didn't look after it very well. When I got it, it was uh, covered in surface rust and uh, it was pretty grubby and I've cleaned it up and reawed the stock. And uh, as you can see from the video, it still works 100% reliably and is perfectly accurate. So it's pretty good going for something that was made so long ago. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more gun related firearms reviews, repair and general gun related content. And thanks for watching.